So, welcome to the Alpha Nerd Podcast. I'm the main host, Kyle, and with my uh, co-host, Dan. Yeah. Hello. We were just talking about Madonna and her weird head. Yeah. She has lots of plastic oh. surgery. She just had a bacterial infection, and she has lots of siblings. Yeah, yeah she does. Um, other than that, uh, news-wise... Everybody's boycotting The Flash? <laughs> yeah, they are. Did, um, did we talk about this last week or no? No, not really. Oh, yeah. Because it wasn't out. All right, yeah, so last people week. are boycotting the Flash. There's, like, protest lines and all kinds of crazy stuff going on. And, and then our, there was apparently – was there violence in front of our local wall, uh, Target? Yes, but I don't have the full story on that, so we're going to let that one go until I have the full report again. i got to find it somewhere. But, um, yeah, a lot of protests going on. Uh, other than that, uh, there was a canceled Boba Fett movie that was supposed to release around the same time as the Solo movie. So it was, Rogue One. it was with the the same fat New Zealand middle aged New Zealand actor they have now. The dude's like seventy. Oh, he's old though. Okay, he's old then. Sorry, yes. sorry. Yeah. He was middle aged when the first movie came out. I'm yeah. sorry. I, I I'm sorry. I'm misapprehension there. Yeah. So he's just ancient. He's not fat. He's just an old guy. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Um, so they were talking about doing that, and then they canceled it because it would have to be rated R. And Disney wasn't having that. Well, that's, but like I said, it's the same reason why they messed up lightsabers. I don't want to see cauterized wounds or people's limbs getting lopped off. Yep. I want our, one of our main protagonists to have somehow have a spinal injury, a non-fatal spinal injury, with a lightsaber. Right. That just kills me. It's the second worst moment in that movie. Behind, come here, traitor. That's my that's my the, my least favorite one. With the space tonfa. Yeah. Traitor. Yep. Space tonfa. How does he know what he looks like? It's right. not like they're giving out like the 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 face of a traitor because they're stormtroopers. They need to be you know, be loyal entirely. Yes. Why would they're all supposed? To they be don't faceless. want to give anybody evidence of someone and betraying their their freak, their ideology. Yeah, they're supposed to be like faceless podunk guys. Right. They won't don't want to admit somebody rejected their programming. Give me a break. This doesn't make yeah. any sense. Um, I'm sending you an e- er, er, article for uh the Flash. Wants to go over that for a couple seconds. So yeah, it's getting all kinds of shade and people are hating on it. They're trying to hurry up and move it to digital. Already after bombing sales in theaters, supposedly. Um, I'm waiting to see the full numbers on it. But this, from what I'm reading, that shows that Warner Brothers has no faith in this. Which I'm just sad it's not going to be a. I don't even like Batman Beyond necessarily. Oh, and the thing Greg was talking about. It's not my favorite well. Batman thing, but it wouldn't be ba- – it would be something different anyway. Yeah, and it would be decent because you could write it a little bit differently than a regular And Batman. plus it's Batman. Yeah. So there's that. Um, I'm trying to think of something interesting happened in the gaming world. Well, uh, they have a Friday Night at Freddy's trailer. I forget when that's Yeah, the Five Night at Freddy's. Uh, one of the other things that um, I did see... Is it Five Nights or Friday Night? Five Nights. Okay, Freddy's. sorry, I got it confused. Nerd. I'm not... Obviously, I'm not that much of a nerd. I didn't know what the title was. Right. Uh, I just like those things because it jump scares. You can scream like a little girl. That's good. Yeah, that's why I don't play it. Have you played it before? Yeah, it's not really my thing. Like, yeah, it makes me jump and stuff, but it's not my thing because it's that's all it relies on. Mm-hmm. Like, I like Resident Evil because it sets up an atmosphere and there's a storyline that gets me sucked into it, and then I jump from it. And where Five Nights at Freddy's just and scary also, for the and sake also, of being scary. Uh, and also, uh, torso bees. Torso bees. Yeah, the lady with the you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The bees coming out of her. Yeah. You know, or is it wasps? Wasps. Okay. But either way, was, she is terrifying. That's why she's my favorite. Yeah. She was really good. October 27th, 2023. Okay. Is the Freddy's one. Okay. And Josh Hutcherson, the guy who's a sidekick of 
the you know in the the Hunger Games is the main guy. And I don't know anybody else except I forget what he's Matthew Lillard. I don't know what he's been in. I forget. No idea. He's you look like you recognize him. Yeah, I just forget what he's been in. He's been in a lot of things. He was in Scream movies. He was in. Scream. Oh yeah, yeah, that's probably what I was thinking of. He's the movie buff guy in Scream, I believe. Huh. Okay. Well, there you go. He was a Scooby Doo too. A Scooby. As a uh, no, what's his name? Uh, what's his stupid name? Shaggy. Shaggy. That's it. He was Shaggy. That's two thousand two. Wow. <laughs> Wow. I am old. This is an interesting gaming article. Yeah. Shows how much faith they have in their own game. <laughs> so they hired... Okay. So I talked about this with Andrew mm -hmm. um, last year. They announced... Actually, probably the very beginning of this year. Can't quite remember. But they announced that they were remaking Silent Hill 2. Why? Because they want to make money. Yes. And that's value, basically. Konami wants to make money. Oh, yeah, yeah. the pachinko machines and everything else weren't doing it. <laughs> so. That's I mean, funny. Come on. They... There's a lot of pachinko companies and there's a lot of competition in that. Yeah. And in Japan. So. Konami was really relying on the fact of their game series to run that for them. But it didn't work so out. So it was like Silent Hill themed pachinko machines? Yeah. That's what they did instead of doing another Silent Hill game. And, Seems like a bad move to me. But and then on top of it, after they fired uh, Kojima, Kojima, that's what they started to do with. They the, fired him. He didn't quit. Well, he quit. Slash, they were going to fire him because he was quitting. You know, one of those things where oh, I want to quit. I'll fire you before you quit. I'll yeah, quit before you're one fired. of those things like someone trying to one up <laughs> each other. Um, and so they hired Blooper Team, which. Andrew is very against because he does not like Blooper Team as a studio. What have they made? I'm going to um, look it up. Yeah, go ahead. Blooper Team. B-L-O-O-B-E-R Team. Blooper. Blooper Team. Oh, okay. Did I say Blooper? You said Blooper. I, I heard Blooper. I don't know if Okay, you said I probably blooper. said Blooper then. Blooper Team. So, as you're looking in that up for the games they've made, I'm going to read you an excerpt for this... Um, from this article, it says Silent Hill 2 Remake Studio says it's done with psychological horror games. So they're going to, are they trying, are they still doing Silent Hill? They're finishing it and then that's it. They're done. Okay. Um, Bloober, Bloober Team Studio behind the upcoming remake of Silent Hill 2 affirms that it is done making psychological horror games. Uh, the the game developer behind the upcoming Silent Hill 2 um, remake and Layers of Fear has recently confirmed the studio is now done with psychological horror games and will focus on mass market horror in the future. What does that mean? What's mass market horror? What does that mean? I don't know. Bloober Team is known for making some of the best psychological horror games out there. So it's controversial decision to say that to say it's to say the least it's a controversial decision. So in other words, they they're deciding to stop doing what they're good at apparently and deciding to do like slasher films. Yeah, probably like really generic. Like, what are they going to become, become an app game company at this point? Or probably just develop stupid stuff like a Dead Space kind of game. Well, Dead Space already exists. You're right. So there's no point. And they already tried to make another Dead Space game and it didn't work out. The best you can do with Dead Space is just take the old ones and update the graphics. It's the best you can do. Because they already did it. Yeah. The The gameplay is what it is. And you're not going to change... Unless you somehow make zero-G combat more realistic somehow. Which I don't know how they're going to do... They would do that. Considering the um, the perspective problem, three three did it pretty pretty well. Two or three did it fairly decent, like where you could do stuff well. Well, yeah, I played two. I didn't play the first yeah. one, but you know, it's fine. I like the look of it, but yeah. So, because Dead Space is one of those games where it's like 
I wish it was a good version of an alien game. Yeah. Instead fair of like just get a power suit with fighting aliens. Yeah, but we already have a good aliens game called Aliens Isolation. Yeah, but did you ever finish that game? Mm-mm. You couldn't do it. It's too hard. It was pissing me off. Um, Because that one part you were at was basically a part, I read all some reviews where everyone was having trouble. Because the AI was too good, it kind of like killed everybody too fast. Yeah, I I could not figure a way to get around that. Because it was right after you you avoided the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have to run straight down this hall, and there's no other way to go except for down this hall. And the alien plops out at the end, and there's nothing to hide behind. Because to me... So I don't know if I maybe hit a glitch or... In my in my opinion, a game like that, they need to give you more tools, like a zero G suit or something. Yeah. So to mess around with some way of getting around. Looking through it. the rest of this article, but that's just me. They're not sure if this like they're saying they're doing all this, but they're not sure if this has to do with the Silent Hill Two remake, which is a possibility. So they might be focusing gameplay over Silent Hill Two's atmosphere and vibe. Which, oh, I was confusing Silent Hill Two with another one. Yeah, which Silent Hill Three is the one with the blonde lady. Yes, with the blonde girl. You mean that's the best one, right? No, Two's the best one. I like the Three better. Three's good too, but Two's way better as a whole. Mm. Um, so what made... did they redo Silent original Silent Hill? No, but that's kind of like what they did with Resident Evil. They skipped redoing Resident Evil One and just did Resident Evil Two. Okay, whatever. Right? That's ridiculous. You know, you figured you start with the original thing to, you know, improve it, so... But, whatever. So, <laughs> no, I get where you're confused. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, so, they're, but they're they're using the one that is the most known and most celebrated, which is, from a marketing standpoint, says what you're going to do. You're going to you're gonna go with the one that made you money. Silent Hill 1 was a flop. It was, it was, it was a success as far as that goes. But if you look at it compared to the Silent Hill 2, it was a flop. It was. I played it. I played it. It was. It was a little hard I, to run around and do. I own them all. <laughs> it's, it was kind of hard to do stuff. Yeah. That was the problem with it. Yeah, but that's the same thing with Resident Evil One. It was very hard to do stuff. So. Some of the concern is now. Or like I was saying, this is if they choose to do this, where they. They focus on the gameplay more than the atmosphere and the psychological horror aspect of uh, Silent Hill 2. This game will be a travesty. Like, it will be a flop. It will not succeed. And Blooper Team will... Blooper. Blooper, blooper, whatever. They're going to shoot themselves in the foot. Um, They're going to shoot themselves in the foot. Well, they are Polish, so, you know. Because the strongest aspect of Silent Hill 2 was <laughs> never the gameplay. It was never the gameplay. Well, Kyle, they are Polish. Yeah. So. They can give me a Polish pole polishing. <laughs> Trying to be alliterative? Yes, a little bit. Good job. So, I'm now more on Andrew's side of things. With the concern when it comes to Silent Hill 2. Because it was the story and the vibe and the the atmosphere is what made it Silent Hill 2 great. It's what made it the standout one of all the Silent Hills. Because it was more focused on it wasn't an evil cult. It was the town itself was a shitty horror place. Horror filled place. Are they redoing the storyline? I don't know. They haven't really said because around because they was... said they were gonna toy with it, so who knows? But the whole concept is the town molded itself around. Well, there's no point in changing the story. No, because the story was fucking amazing. Except you know maybe maybe you can go into more detail maybe. Yeah. But maybe. you can't really change the basic outline of the thing. No, you need to have it be he goes there and. He's dealing with a bunch of monsters that are all vaguely sexualized. Mm. Because that was the whole concept is uh, James... Did you play the second one? I might have played part of it. Okay, so the long short of it is um, 
James Sutherland had a sick wife who was dying, and she had all like it, her disease started giving her like sores and made her all fucking crazy and mm-hmm. weird looking. But like, and she was like down in the dumps because she was dying. So he was frustrated in his relationship with her because because of her sickness, the relationship went down the toilet. So eventually, she, he kills her. Mm-hmm. Like she, she's like, I want it to end. So he kills her. And then when he goes inside, he'll you kind of find out like that's why the towns, all the monsters are vaguely, vaguely, vaguely feminine. Mm-hmm. Um, they're either S and M kind of things or they're like mannequins with just lower half of bo- female bodies. Mannequins, everything's very graphic as far as that goes. And then there's only one character in the whole game as far as monster variety that is not that way and that's pyramid head yeah where he's the giant powerhouse monster that's jamming his giant metal uh phallus his giant metal phallus implement into everything because he's killing he kills monsters and everything else so it was look, like a, a lot of people were using that I and like, look i don't see pyramid head that way I just think of it as the opposite side of the coin. You know, the whole sex and death thing? Yes. Uh, I see what you're getting. It has nothing to... Because the thing doesn't even look like a, you know, a penis. No, no. There's his sword. Like, they're using, like, the symbolism. Sword? when Because um, the first thing you see Pyramid Head in after you first see him is he's, like, wrestling two of the female mannequin I monsters. understand what happened. And it looked like they were just having like an orgy thing and then he gets mad and like kills them all. And then like a lot of the time he's got that giant knife that he's just jamming into everything. So that's where a lot of people got that from. They're going and, too far on the sexual side. I think it's more of like yeah. like I said two sides of the same coin. Everything looks blood covered. Could be menstrual blood. Could be whatever kind of blood. Yeah. But it could be mean. It could mean either sexual or related to genitalia, like menstrual blood, or it yeah. could be about you cutting someone's head off. Yeah. So, so there's there's a lot of ways. It could be both ways for every character. Yes. Because and that's then that's also one of the beauty. That's beauty a, parts of Silent Hill Two is it was really subjective to what whoever's playing it. Yeah, I understand it that because. And, and it was vague concepts that worked so well. And I feel like if Bloober Team does what they're going to do, it's, oh, it's all about the gameplay, it's going to be a it's not less real... well-written Alan Wake. It's not really going to be about – it shouldn't be about the gameplay because the gameplay is not – The focus of horror games. It shouldn't be that hard to because gameplay is supposed to be simplistic. Yeah. You run around. You can cycle through weapons. You can open stuff. You can beat some shit to death, and then you find three random You don't things. even need a jump button most of the time. No, you don't. And then you just need three random things that you can turn into a key. Right. You might be able to make the areas more complicated, or maybe have some other way of getting around stuff, or what have you. You know. Because the jump button, the jump thing alone makes things it more difficult to program, I would think. But that's just me. But... Yeah. So, with that, I've lost a lot of confidence in that. So, I mean, I was a little disappointed because it's a PlayStation exclusive. But now that they're doing this, I can live with it being a PlayStation exclusive because if it sucks, I can just wait, pick up my copy for my collection so I have every copy. Although, if this one sucks, are they going to have another one ever again? Oh, they already have like three games announced. So they're going to have to finish them. But the one looks really good because it looks like it's Silent Hill set hundreds of years ago. And maybe in Japan. I can be fine with that. Because Silent Hill 4 didn't take place in Silent Hill. And most of Silent Hill 3 did not take place in Silent Hill. So how are they justifying the environment? Um, I'm assuming it's going to be more cult crap. Like they're summoning the same spirit as Silent Hill, basically? Like, okay. So, in Silent Hill Homecoming, which was 
the fifth game. Mm-hmm. Um, it was took place in a completely different town that had nothing to do with Silent Hill, except for the f- four founders of that town were originally settlers of uh, Silent Hill that moved away, and to keep the cult's power going, they made a deal with their god to when they moved to this new place, as long as they kept sacrificing their their children mm-hmm. after every so many years. Every, uh, every generation has to sacrifice a child of the four families to keep the town from going to hell. And that was pretty much the premise of Homecoming. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping they did something like that. Like, I it, it doesn't really confirm one way or another. Just from the one look of it, it looked very... Because to me, the way the easiest, easiest way to connect everything if you want different locales would be to have, a, like you said, the cult thing, except they're like trying to summon the same demon or spirit or something similar. Yeah. From the same place. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the same one. That way, every game has a different end spirit thing. Yeah. It could be from the same realm. But it could also be the same spirit, but except for like. And I have a feeling is if they do do it this way, it's going to be like Fatal Frame, where it's going to be a screwed up version of shintoism like well if it's set in japan yeah fine yeah but, but if you're it's a penny that way you can if you do a different continents or places or what have you yeah because like i said how they did five was is the original head families were part of silent hill and then they moved away so i'm hoping it's gonna be like hey way back in the day when silent hill was first coming around the cult was really big that, you know, there was like, you know, when we had uh, Chinese and Japanese immigrants come in and mm-hmm. do like railroads and stuff, like something like that. And then they went back to there and took the cult with them and started practicing cult there and got a following. So th- that gives me hope. That gives me hope. But Bloober Team and whoever the CEO is, I have to relook up his name, but I might have to spin kick him. <laughs> Is it one of the founders of the company? No. It's a new guy? Uh, apparently. Is this... Are you talking about Konami? Or are you talking about... Uh, Bloober Team. Oh. He wants to... Like I said, when he said mass market horror. And I don't know what that means. I don't... I think... That, it, that seems more like Five Night at Freddy's or something slasher like Slasher films, maybe? Yeah, know. something. I don't know. So, that that's vague. Um. So, there's all that. But on the upside of things, we do have Alan Wake 2 coming here soon. When is that again? Because that, on the other hand, I don't care. I'm so excited for it. Well, you you can be if you want. I'm just... I'm going to be. Just be ready you're, to be disappointed. Anyway. Your face is going to be disappointed. Well, c- come on, Kyle. Yeah. You have years and years of experience with Alan Wake. You uh, played it how many times? <laughs> surprisingly, I only played it two or three times all the way through. All the way through, yeah. I've played all the side material as well. And what makes me sad is they didn't make uh, American Nightmare part of the uh, HD remake collection. So... Boo on them. Pieter Babinio. Ugh. His Bloober Team CEO. I don't like that guy, though. Um, October. October 17th of this year is when we're going to see uh, Alan Wake 2. And Wolf Among Us 2. Damn it! Why? Got pushed back to... 2024. Oh well, as long as it's good. That's all I care about. Old Big B. So, um, I'm, I'm looking up what mass market horror is. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Neither do I. So you let me know what it. Uh, on the other side of things, usually. A good sign a game's going to be awful is when it's being overly marketed. 
Mm-hmm. And there's a game series that's already starting that trend because it's getting random commercials on YouTube now, and they're really trying to blow it up and talk about how great it's going to be and all the different stuff you're going to be able to do, is Starfield. Um, Just recently, I just started seeing, because I know it's about to release here soon, and everyone's excited about it, but when they start doing the over-promotion, you have to realize that means that the studio itself does not have enough faith in the game's name itself and what they're trying to do to make sales. So they go and have some idiot or some guy that had some kind of acknowledgement back in the day of video game development mm-hmm. start talking about how, you know, this game's going to be great, it's going to be the next big thing. Guess what they did that with? Mm. Mm. They did that with Cyberpunk. They did that with... Uh, Redfall. They were promoting the crap out of Redfall. Uh, there's there's several other games this year. That which one's Redfall? It was supposed to be a um, vampire version of uh, what's that stupid co-op four-player shooter game? Uh, Borderlands. It's supposed to be a oh co-op. Was it cartoony version. like Borderlands? A little bit. It's not like crazy cartoony. Because but... Borderlands is good. Yes. Not the best game in the universe. But it, it, it did what it set out to do. Right. Plus, it looks kind of like uh, that. What's that one cartoony video game from back in the day? Uh, 13? Oh, yeah, 13. 13 was awesome. Mm-hmm. Especially when they had the guy. And then they did a remake, X. and it wasn't as good. No, because they <laughs> took out some of the things that made that game great. Right. Like the weird uh, Hunt the Grim Reaper game. <laughs> that was so weird. <laughs> Yeah, that was bef- that was in the before time. The before time when mass market, you know, mass, you know, big game studios actually tried things once in yep. a while. But by the way, what mass market means is not slow pace, so like zombie horror or action horror, that kind of stuff. As far as I could tell, because when I looked up mass market horror, oh, it... the other one I was looking for for the example, Fallout seventy six. Yeah, that was terrible. They, they overblew that, and that went down like a turd on fire. You know, it's based, from, from what I could tell, it seemed to be kind of like a an app game, but with graphics in it. Because it was like a management game, kind of. Yeah. Which isn't what Fallout's about. Because you know how they have the, 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 the vault game or whatever on the app store or whatever? Yeah. I'm like, who wants to play a management game? When have Fallout, which is like half action game, half role playing game. Basically. Yeah, and it's it's a nice crossover between that you can get both sides of it if you want, or if you want to be all RPG, then you can do that. If you want to be all the funny, action the funny thing about the the Fallout franchise that always bothered me is that they they the the Vayner Studios never took oh, took the 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 hint from Fallout New Vegas. You know, have like down the site shooting and all that stuff that all the time. And get rid of the voice actors. I don't know why they have voice actors. No, you need to keep the voice actors. No. The voice actors are one of the best parts of that game. No, I'm, I'm not talking about that game specifically. I'm talking about generally. There's it limits the, no, the amount of dialogue options. Because you have to program every voice actor. If the protagonist is silent, you can have all the voice actors and other things. Oh, you mean the protagonist. That's what I mean. Pro- oh, okay. Yes, I agree. The the pro- that way you can have it in your own brain what yeah. the idea is like you read what you say and then you you put it in your own head about how right. you said it right I agree with that because there is things about Fallout Four I did not like with the voice actor because it limits the number of options because kind of like Mass even Effect. when you made him sound angry he did not sound angry oh well, plus from what you told me I didn't watch you play it all the way through but. You could never really be a bad guy? No, you couldn't. And that was the other big thing is they took out the evil option. Because the way it worked is they... All right. They were kind of... It was that thing where... It was like a PC thing. They didn't want to show that people could be super evil. Yeah, right. (laughs) Um, The way it worked is it was all over the place. Because the Brotherhood of Steel, which were... Like, in 3, they made them just straight-up good guys. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The Brotherhood of Steel were kind of, like, straight-up good guys. 
which was never the case. Well, that faction were good guys. All in the in the earlier ones, one and two. Yeah, they could go either way. Yeah, and then in four and New Vegas, they could go either way. But they, they were kind of douchebags. They were about hoarding technology and doing things sh- the shit they wanted to do. Yeah, because where three they were kind of like we're gonna help the resistance and help against well, they, the enclave. That was the leader of that faction's because he was sent there to get all the inf- get all the technology from there, and he and decided the enclave and he from. decided to just go rogue. Yeah, fair enough. So, but anyway, but I think that's also because they decided to toy with an evil faction of the Brotherhood of Steel, the Enclave. Mm-hmm. So that is also a factor. Because in the New Vegas game, you could side with the Brotherhood of Steel, but they wouldn't, they couldn't win against the Republic or whatever over there because yeah. they didn't have enough people. Yeah. So you had to basically ally with somebody. Otherwise, you were just going to be starved to death, basically, because you couldn't get out. Yeah. So. So. In, I might be wrong about that. But. Yeah. Four was, yeah, because they were a very small part in four. Because uh, in uh, Las Vegas, mm-hmm. you had to choose between the. Helping. You could you could do. What's his name? The, the, the computer guy from Vegas. Yeah, you could help him take control. You can help the public take control. You can you help. You help the Legion. Yeah, and help the... Or keep everyone free and do what you want. You could, I think you could side with the other guys, but it, like basically destabilize the whole place or whatever. Yeah, it, there was a lot more options, and, and everyone had a different feel to them. Um, and almost nobody I know chooses the Legion, but anyway. Yeah. Um, I think I... No, I never chose Legion. I chose to be independent, and then I... Uh, <laughs> I, instead of fighting the main Legion guy, I had Max talking, so I talked him into leaving. <laughs> talked him to leave. <laughs> like, I negotiated a way for him to leave. That's something else. And I got banned from all the casinos. Because you just took all their money? I took Max Luck, and then I <laughs> just got all the money. So, I agree with you on that. Because the voice acting for main character in four felt really like neutral neutral everything was neutral except for when you took drugs and all of a sudden he went really (laughs) like oh my god i took i took psycho on accident and he starts yelling real loud and stuff (laughs) fuckers i'll kill you and then you take an aggressive option in the game and he's like hey i'm gonna kill you guys like what the but what the, if it's, it's kind of like what if Clint Eastwood started yelling whenever yeah. he took a drink? Yes, but there was a, a set of dialogue options that were really done really well, and that was the Silver Shroud missions. Yeah, I know that's my favorite part too. <laughs> like the dialogue your guy options. looked really weird in that outfit. But... Old old Morgan Slaveman. <laughs> For the record, he kind of, he was a he was a black guy with a really like. Scarred face, was yeah. it? He was a really scarred face. He was an old guy, guy with scarred face, gray Super hair. Super long hair. Yeah. <laughs> and he was the evil verse Morgan Freeman, so he's Morgan Slaveman. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. And that was before I learned you couldn't be evil in the game. <laughs> before you could... Yeah, he, he was going to be evil? Yes, he was going to be super evil. And that's too bad. Just like I made uh, my evil Abraham Lincoln in 3... Because I always do multiple runs. I do a Kyle does whatever run. Then I go to a. Are you actually trying to be like Abraham Lincoln, or are you just killing everybody he, as Abraham? He just looked like Abraham. He just Lincoln. wanted the hat and the. He was just yeah, and evil the, Lincoln and the evil gun. Lincoln. That's all he was. Was evil Lincoln. Well, Lincoln's repeater is one of the better guns. Oh, it was the best gun. <laughs> and it became even more better when they put in the. Uh, the one DLC where it was down in Louisiana mm. because they had re- regular repeaters mm-hmm. that if you took the good enough skill in repair, mm-hmm. you could repair the Lincoln repeater mm-hmm. with them. And it was super good. Uh, I got to go back and see who play those. I got to go play out other worlds. I've been wanting to play that. I just haven't. You have it? Yeah, is, I have it with all it, the DLCs. Is that a newer game? Or? Yeah, it's a, 
it, 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 it's Fallout in space, and it's it was good when I tried what I played of it. I is just, it on one planet or many? Many planets. And then so it's like that you can one, build a crew of people. What's that one game that had many planets on it, but there was nobody on them? Oh, uh, No Man's Sky. Yeah, that's it. And now so it's, it's like No Man's Sky, with, except with people on it? Yes. And um, from and, what I played of Other Worlds, <laughs> when I first tried it, it's actually pretty nice. I like it. I just haven't had the ability to sit down and play a game like that in a while. Mm-hmm. Like... You have a lot of things going on. Yep. Like... I want to play Signalus. I've been wanting to play Signalus. I just can't bring myself to sit down long enough to play it. But it's always because I had other things going on, or I wanted to go take care of some other things, or you know, the darkness in my mind took over, so I decided to sit depressed in a corner. Or you want to buy another couch. Yeah. Or pick up another couch, or pick up another. Since desk. you already have four couches and three desks, or whatever it is. <laughs> right. I'm exaggerating. So, it's only two desks and three couches. With, but still. with my work officially coming an end this week, and then me having the next couple weeks off. I'm going to start sit down running through games. Um, Signalus. Uh, I'm going to finish Choo Choo Charles, damn it. Choo Choo Charlie. Yep. I'm going to actually invite Pete, the person who bought me the game. Mm-hmm. When I stream it, we're going to sit there and shoot the crap and finish it. Um, Why did he buy you that? That's like a Christmas present, and plus he wanted me to play it. Oh. So, because Pete's a nice guy. So, <laughs> that, that's awesome. Um, Some other people want me some other games. So, no. Uh, I don't know. Uh, that's it. All right. Have a good night. Bye.